Over the past several years or so, J.K. Rowling has become so consumed by her obsession with hating trans people that it's basically the only thing that she ever tweets about. We're talking all day, every day. Trans people live in her head rent-free, and she is incapable of not thinking about them. And it's gotten so bad that even fellow transphobes are starting to notice, and they're reaching out to her to gently get her to maybe change the subject because... It's kind of a bad look. For example, in response to someone that she was arguing with on Twitter about trans people, which is how I imagine she spends most of her time these days, she posted this unnecessarily long and superfluous screed about what a woman is. And nearly a month after she made this post, Elon Musk decided to unexpectedly chime in with a banger that nobody expected, writing, while I heartily agree with your points regarding sex and gender, may I also suggest posting interesting and positive content on other matters? <laughs> <laughs> in other words, even Elon Musk thinks that she's gone too far. Her obsession with trans people is a little bit too much. When Elon Musk, the person with perhaps the least amount of self-awareness on the planet, thinks that you should maybe reevaluate your priorities, that's when you've gone too far. And to be clear, Elon Musk is no friend to trans people. But I think as a fellow transphobe, he recognizes that her inability to stop tweeting about them every single day kind of makes all transphobes look like deranged freaks and i mean they are but she is so much more unhinged and obsessive than other transphobes that it's just it's kind of ridiculous right and elon musk is correct about that right in that limited sense he's right a broken clock can be right twice a day but everyone kind of expected her to respond with the most unhinged response imaginable because she's one of the most thin-skinned people on the planet who does not take criticism well. But for some reason, she decided to take Elon Musk's advice. I'm not joking about this. So she responded saying, ha ha ha, just realized that I missed being advised to share more positive content yesterday. Imagine I'm reading this in a British voice. Sharing this about my writing life, which happens to have been published today in the Sunday Times, should in no way be interpreted as me doing as I'm told. But you're literally doing exactly as you're told. So how else should that be interpreted? interpreted and i expected her to respond saying oh my god how dare you say that a woman should be doing something else it's just but she's like oh, okay yeah that makes sense of all people elon musk got through to her in this limited sense but of course i mean that's not to say that she stopped posting obsessively about trans people because after that she went back to tweeting about them non-stop like she usually does but since she at least temporarily took elon musk's advice well, he decided to pay her a compliment, incorrectly writing that J.K. Rowling rocks. Now, he wrote this in response to somebody posting about her life story and her struggle with poverty and depression and domestic violence. But here's the thing. We all have our own battles, right? She's not unique in her experience. The question is, are we able to learn and grow from these struggles and ultimately become better people? And the answer with respect to J.K. Rowling is an unequivocal no. She's a terrible person, and she spends an unhealthy amount of time punching down on marginalized people who just want to live their fucking lives. She could do what other rich people do and travel the world, buy yachts and mansions, eat fancy food, even, dare I say, help people less fortunate than her. But instead, she spends a ridiculous amount of time tweeting vicious things about trans people from the comfort of her castle. And we've talked about her harmful rhetoric before, but here's a quick rundown for those unaware of what she's said about trans people in the past, courtesy of LGBTQ Nation. Quote, in 2019, she first revealed her anti-trans views by tweeting her support for an anti-transgender activist. Since then, she regularly spreads fear-mongering misinformation about how trans women would potentially commit assaults if allowed in women's restrooms, has written long essays denigrating trans women, repeats baseless conspiracy theories about kids being coerced into transitioning and promotes transphobic merchandise vendors on social media. Additionally, Rowling has come out in support of conversion therapy for trans people and claimed that almost everyone agrees with her, even as famous people that she has worked with condemned her words. She also published a book about a man who wears dresses in order to kill women. She recently donated 70,000 pounds, about $89,000, to a transphobic Scottish women's organization to oppose trans-inclusive governmental policies. 
So she is literally using her wealth and her platform to spread dangerous conspiracy theories about trans people, and it's not like she's just tweeting into the void. She is a very famous person, and what she says matters. It has real-world consequences. But in the process, she's also destroyed her reputation and real relationships with people that she's known for a very long time. For example, she lashed out at Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson recently in response to someone saying that they owed her an apology because they condemned her transphobia, to which she responded saying, quote, celebs who cozied up to a movement intent on eroding women's hard-won rights and who use their platforms to cheer on the transitioning of minors can save their apologies for traumatized detransitioners and vulnerable women relying on single-sex spaces. So in that single tweet, you can see how much misinformation she's spreading, not just about trans people, but their allies who she knows in real life. She's seriously accusing Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson of trying to destroy women's rights. Do you honestly believe that, J.K. Rowling? You actually believe that they're against women's rights? They support trans rights to the detriment of women's rights? That's just deranged. And they're not mutually exclusive, right? Civil rights are important across the board. Nobody's free until everyone's free. But I mean, you could see why there's this problem there. And I love that they're not offering her an apology. Nobody's apologized, but yet it's telling that she is entitled enough to believe that she's actually owed an apology. For what? But I mean, I think that that tweet is really interesting because it gives us a lot of insight into her mentality. Now, if you haven't followed her downfall when she initially came out as anti-trans back in 2020 or so, Daniel Radcliffe, who has been a longtime LGBTQ plus ally, publicly denounced her in an op-ed that he wrote for The Trevor Project, which is an organization that he's worked with for a very long time. And he wrote, transgender women are women. Any statement to the contrary erases the identity and dignity of transgender people and goes against all advice given by professional healthcare associations who have far more expertise on this subject matter than either Joe or I. Now, ever since then, she's had this ax to grind with him and she felt like she was wronged by him because he spoke out against what she said, but it wasn't personal. He just cares about trans people, period. And he felt compelled to speak up given his history with her. And he explained this in an interview with The Atlantic. I'd worked with The Trevor Project for 12 years and it would have seemed like, I don't know, immense cowardice to me to not say something Radcliffe says when I raised this subject. Quote, I wanted to try and help people that had been negatively affected by the comments he tells me and to say that if those are Joe's views, then they are not the views of everybody associated with the Potter franchise. Now, I commend him for speaking out because it's not easy to publicly criticize people you know and care about, but he didn't want to be silent because he felt like that would be an implicit endorsement of her bigoted views. But more importantly, he didn't want to be silent because he's just a good person who cares about trans people and felt compelled to combat the bigotry that she was spreading. But because of this, she's gone full cry bully and is making it seem as if he and his Harry Potter co-stars are all traitors for biting the hand that fed them because I guess they're required to pay deference to her forever since I guess she's responsible for their rise. But he responded to that notion as well. The Atlantic continues, during the blowback, he was often thrown in together with his Harry Potter co-stars, Emma Watson and Rupert Grintz, who both also expressed their support for the trans community in response to Rowling's comments. In the British press particularly, he says, there's a version of, are these three kids ungrateful brats that people have always wanted to write and they were finally able to. So good for them, I guess. Never mind that he found the premise simply wrong-headed. Joe, obviously Harry Potter would not have happened without her, so nothing in my life Life would have probably happened the way it is without that person, but that doesn't mean that you owe the things you truly believe to someone else for your entire life. And he's exactly right. This idea that he is somehow indebted to her for the rest of his life is absurd. That movie also owes its success to him and his co-stars who brought those characters to life. But this lingering anger that she has with Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson, as well as a number of fans that she's lost, kind of explains why She's so obsessed with trans people, I think. My theory is that she kind of blames trans people for her bad reputation rather than her own bigotry. And she's probably tweeting obsessively about them because she's seeking vindication. She wants to prove to everyone that she's actually the one who's right and everyone else is wrong. The studies are wrong. And the sooner that she proves how right she was about the big bad trans menace, the faster her reputation and relationships that she's lost will be restored in her view. Probably. I'm just kind of guessing and speculating about 
what she believes, but I think that she's doubling down on the transphobia because she's incapable of being introspective and refusing to take responsibility for her own downfall. But I mean, we are what we say, are we not? Like she has, with her full chest, endorsed transphobia and came out as a turf. And you know that the response to that is not going to be positive, right? I mean, it might be in your own bubble, but for the most part, this is your legacy. That's how you're gonna be remembered. And rather than just like accepting that she's wrong and immoral, she's on a mission to prove to everyone that they're wrong and she's right. And as a result, she keeps digging a deeper hole for herself, but that's not the path to redemption. Renouncing her own bigoted views and working to undo the damage that she caused is the true path to redemption. And the good news is it's not actually too late for her. It's never too late to do the right thing. Even some Republicans are realizing it was wrong for them to mistreat trans people who are vulnerable. For example, a gender affirming care ban for trans youth was actually defeated in the state of Kansas after two Republicans who previously voted for that bill changed their minds and ultimately joined Democrats to vote against it. So the two Republicans in question are Susie Concannon and Jesse Borgen. And the question is, why? They voted for this gender affirming care ban and then they had a change of heart. What led to this? And put simply, they had a change of heart. They listened and they learned. Susan Concannon is gonna explain that in this following clip. We hear of bullying and ask authorities to make it stop. We hear about mental health, about suicide and ask why. We're not listening to the impacted youth. Government involvement is not the answer. I voted for this bill in the past due to concerns about the surgery. With further consideration, this bill is vague beyond the surgery. These decisions belong between the team of professionals and the parents. The youth need our help, not government overreach. To all who have reached out, I hear you and vote to sustain the governor's veto. That, my friends, is what we call growth. These two Republicans listened, learned, and realized the impact that they were having on this vulnerable community. You love to see it. So, I mean, if two Republicans can have a change of heart, what's J.K. Rowling's excuse? The answer is, she has no excuse. She can either reevaluate her discriminatory views and try to learn and grow and stop being a hateful bigot and also try to undo the damage that she's caused, or she can keep rage tweeting about trans people all day and be remembered as an isolated, bitter bigot who let hate consume her. I mean, if she does care about her own legacy, which it seems like she does, she should opt for the former rather than the latter. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, F around and find out. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, game, game, Pride. Trans rights are human rights. It is necessary to push trans on the kids. Pride.